Well, today almost lived up to its hype, for myself anyway, my own hype to myself. Um, happy with the way most everybody went. Obviously, Gypsy Hill let me down a little bit. I'll talk about him in a minute. Um, I guess, you know, I'm on the phone with Wendy this afternoon, and Wendy hasn't been feeling that good the last uh, week. She's trying to get over a f flu or something, and she's just not feeling good, and I keep telling her, take all the time you need, take all the time you need, uh, because our health is most important, right? Sure, March's bills weren't perfect. You guys know that that was not Wendy's handiwork. That was Amy and I and some help from other people trying to get everything done. Um, but it's March, right? It's one month out of the year. It's one week out of the month. It's not the end of the world. I'm sitting there talking to Wendy and I can tell she's tired. Um, and I'm telling her just, you know, try to relax and just take it easy. She feels like she's letting everybody down. You're not letting anybody down. Not letting me down. You know, our clients are certainly not going to get upset because things aren't perfect right now. You know, we're pretty a pretty tight-knit community and we're more worried about how the horses are racing than we are about, about most anything else and the other stuff, you know, the financial stuff that will all fix itself. So, relax. From me to you, and I'm sure from everybody to Wendy, just take your time. Um... As I'm talking to Wendy, you want to talk about putting things into perspective? Wendy's telling me, you know, she, you know, I can tell she can't sleep that good right now. And I'm watching. And it's, it's a nice day, but it's hot. I, I'm in the sun and I'm looking. 20 feet ahead of me is this lady. And she's late. She just looks like she's falling asleep in a chair. And I'm talking to Wendy and I'm thinking to myself, well, here's somebody that certainly doesn't have any problems sleeping. I wish I could fall asleep in the chair right now just like her. And just as I thought it, uh, and a gentleman comes out and, and shakes her. And then everybody from the barn pours out. And they have her on the ground and they're doing CPR. And uh, I I couldn't I couldn't believe what I was watching. And so many things go through your head. You guys, I'm sure you've seen something like this happen. Whether it be somebody hit by a car or an accident somewhere or something like this. And thankfully, the, the lady in question was okay. The, the ambulance came, like, immediately. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, hats off to the, the Washington Fire Department or, or, or whatever, whoever it was. Because it was under three minutes, it felt like, before that lady was, was discovered. And that fire truck was in front of her. I, I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe how quickly it happened. And as it's happening... It, you can't help but put your life into perspective and you know as I said to, to Wendy you know relax it's another day it's not the end of the world it certainly isn't uh, worth getting worked up about and here's the reason why so um, you know to the to obviously to that lady and her family um, wow it, it appeared that she was she was a, a, a awake and okay when she was leaving but to them uh, man very scary situation and it happens you guys know it happens all the time you never know what's waiting around the corner right or at night or in the morning so uh, you know, best wishes to her and her family for sure now uh, on to the, the more fun part of my job which was talking about the horses. Uh, I can't really update you about the horses this morning at the barn because I wasn't there. I left last night, took these five horses over to the qualifiers. Now, uh, the track was kind of deep today and we did have a few horses qualifying with flip-flops on, but they did well, so there's no concern in that regard. I was happy with them. The only thing that went wrong, uh, Gypsy kind of let me down. So, you know, I told you last week he made that break. I didn't feel that he should have or that he needed to. And ended up gelding him. I guess a, a component of of that castration was the qualifier. And um, when I warmed him up today, I thought he felt awesome. In fact, echoed the sentiments of Jason Merriman, who trained him the other day and said he trained the best he's seen him. Going slow, and while he was on point and attentive, he he's flawless. He looks great. But he's shaken easily, and he came unglued this morning when he shouldn't have. You know, sure, he got a little angry because I was grabbing hold of him, letting the five down, but that doesn't give you 
nor should it afford you an opportunity to make a break like that. And that wasn't the only, but that was the only break. I would have been angry at myself a little bit, but he'd run at every turn for no particular reason. Remember, I looked at his boots the other day. There's no swelling in his leg. There's no heat in weird places. He just wanted out. So we are going to do uh, exactly what we would do to any horse in this situation, aside from castrate them. He's going to work. He's going to work for the next week. No, we're not going to overdo it. He's still Gypsy Hill. But we need to get him back mentally to a place where he was last year, where he wasn't sound, right? And that could have played a role in this year's uh, two qualifier fiasco also, is what took place in 2023. I can tell you there's no reason for me making breaks that he did now. We, I, I, I have no interest in making any wholesale changes to his equipment or his shoeing, but we will make a minor modification to his hind shoes just to help him out because there is no doubt that he is brushing um, that he is brushing those boots and in turn uh, causing himself to worry, be concerned, and then lose his focus and make a break. So as I say, there won't be any wholesale changes. There will be some mod minor modifications. You will not see Gypsy Hill in the qualify next week, I don't believe. We're going to work on working him through this little uh, uh, this little mental issue that he has right now. So whether it be, you know, what do they call it when the golfers get the yips, right? Or you're pulling balls as a, as a, as a baseball player or, or you know, swinging at bad pitches or dropping the football. Call it whatever you want. Use whatever sport and sports analogy you want. He is just not on his game right now. Physically, he looks great. Put on all the weight we wanted to see this year. He's sharp. He's feeling good. He's just not doing it properly. We're going to help him do it. So that is my answer to you for, for uh, the situation surrounding Renegade Gypsy. It can be helped. It isn't a lameness issue. It isn't even a mechanical issue. It is a mental issue, in my opinion, and we are going to get to the bottom of it. Help him push through it, get through that hurdle, and get back into the swing of things for 2024. That was not our first qualifier. Our first qualifier was arson. Now, when you go to the qualifiers, you guys see it all the time at Mohawk. You know, 2-4, 2-3. I don't condone it, nor do I like it. I don't think you have to go out and qualify them in 56, but when you train a horse in 58... And then your first quarter in the qualifier is 31 and 2. <clears throat> Not really where I want to go. Now, the school of thought that would allow people to condone that would be we're just going to go over again and go in two minutes and then run them up the wood as first start. And that is where there is a split in the paths. I have zero interest in wasting a start running a horse up the wood. I expect our horses to be ready to go right out of the gate as they should. And that is my personal feeling of racing horses. Now, there are lots of people that don't subscribe to that, even some in my own family. But at the end of the day, I view a start, an easy start as a wasted start out of the gate. That is not to mean that you have to race the horses hard. They only have so many starts every year. And although I don't really love the way James races, I'm super conservative, it does make for a longer year. That's the reality. That's true. I will, I will admit that. <clears throat> so, um, we're up to the quarter and 30 in a piece with Aris, and I'm thinking I want to go on 56 with him. Um, <clears throat> it's pretty clear that the person on the front end uh, is not going to go in 56. I, I, I don't really know who the person was, but I can tell you their horse's body language was that, not that of a 56 pacer. As we came to the half... <sighs> There was nothing I can do. He forced my hand. I came out of the two hole, cleared to the lead. I let Arson stretch his legs down the back stretch a little bit and asked him to pace down the lane, and he was awesome. 27 and 3, fastest last quarter of the day, I'm sure. Um, and he looked very good. Earplugs in straight, running it a bit, but he always did. Running it just a bit in the turns, but, but always did. And very, very capable. Felt very good. <clears throat> super, super happy and impressed with Arson this morning. Then I went with Gypsy. Next up, I believe, was, and we did have, I'm going to halt for just a second and rewind just a little bit. We did have two trainers this morning, um, so there were two pieces of bad news. Not one, Gypsy Hill making the break was one, but before him, there was another one. I trained insider trading. She trained great. <clears throat> Very happy with the changes we made to her shoeing, but upon further review, realized that she, now I trained her in 215, and I'm glad I did now. 
I was planning on going around 25. I just felt like the way she was traveling wasn't giving me a fair view of how she was going to react in a racing scene. So I let her pick up, pick it up, up her speed down the lane. Come the last quarter, about 33 seconds, which was more than enough for me to say yes. I'm happy with what I see. Very happy with the changes we made and comfortable heading into Thursday. I was comfortable. She was not. We scoped her full of mucus and there was some blood in there, which obviously when you're looking at what the vet called a five out of five for mucus, <clears throat> when you're looking at that, you're going to see some blood more times than not. So she can't go on Thursday. If it was Saturday, maybe not Thursday. So, uh, and, and to answer anybody's question, how do we not see this? I got to the barn last night at six o'clock uh, Tim's daughter Meadow was feeding the horses. I did a walkthrough of our horses and the horses that weren't eating all their feed because it's new feed, right? Different feed at the Meadows than there is that we feed at Northfield Park. Uh, Arson was being picky. Insider Training was being picky. Uh, JK Victory was. We brand matched all the horses that weren't eating. Great. We're diving right into their bowls. And when I walked away, everybody was eating. When I came in this morning, Insider Training had eaten everything. No snot in her nose. She was bright. You would have, I am confident in saying that it is nobody's fault that she uh, that she scoped sick because she certainly gave me no indications. Not looking at her, not in her appetite, not in her mannerisms, and certainly not the way that she trained would lead me to believe that she was sick. So it's just one of those things. She'll be out for Thursday and one of our clients said, well, can she make the final? Potentially, I suppose. But I guess my... my big picture answer to that is I don't really care if she makes the final or not. I have much bigger fish to fry with insider trading than the final of the whatever the hell this series is called. So our game plan still is to get her back on track. Mechanically, I think we've, we've got to that point, but not uh, as far as health-wise. That will take at least a week. So uh, I guess one step forward and at least one step back with her this morning when she trained. Now, right before that, uh, I trained greatest ending. He was awesome. Awesome. I think it went a mile in two minutes last half of 57 with him, and he was very, very strong. Really, really pleased with greatest ending today. Scoped him. No blood, no mucus, no nothing with him. It is worth noting, I'll, I'll, I'll preface the rest of our, our qualifying day by saying we scoped every horse that trained at any speed today, and every single one of them were clean except for insider training. No blood, no mucus, no pimples, no palate issues, nothing. So that is a good thing. Uh, next up was JK Victory. Again, like 31 seconds to the quarter. I don't want to be on the front, but it was pretty clear the young man on the front didn't want to be there either. So in front of the grandstand, I took over the lead. Uh, I let JK, I forgot that JK Victory can get a bit lazy sometimes too. So I put him in gear down the back stretch. He was actually cornering well. Would he corner that well in 52? I don't think he'd get out of gear, but there was... A, a obvious power drain, a power outage of some sort in the turns. I suspect you see that in Indiana also. But does that mean he'll get around the Meadows or Oak Grove? Get around is a wonderful statement. A better one would be, can he win? <clears throat> I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know about that. Um, I think what we'll do is bring him back. He's in the back. So I, I will preface it again, I'll stop again and say five went to the Meadows, two are on their way back. Gypsy Hill and uh, JK Victory are in the back. Now we can train JK Victory up really hard again. And if I'm comfortable with a mile and 55 at Northfield Park, then I suppose we can easily put him in to go at the Meadows next week. At any point, we do have Mel Gibson and Mounts for all going to Indiana uh, the first part of May. So at any point, he can join them. Or they can all go together, for that matter. So, J.K. Victory's qualifier, 58 last quarter, 28-1. Kind of looked lackluster from the outside looking in, but felt good, especially when I, I it took me till about halfway down the backstretch to remind myself, hey, this guy's a lazy bugger, too. Remember, he's, he can be a little lazy. So, 28-1 on the end of it, earplugs in. Was sparkling mile? No, but a good mile. And we were really pacing the last, uh, well, definitely the last eighth. There were some horses coming to him. I know they weren't his caliber, but for an eighth of a mile, they could be. And they were certainly pacing to him, and he was pacing away from them. So a good mile, I'll say a great mile from Arson, 
a poor mile from Gypsy, a good mile for JK Victory. Then I went out on the track with, uh, I think time is on my side was first. I didn't want to go too much with him. I wanted to see him stretch his legs a little bit, but I did not want to go too much with him. He was good because he's coming back four days notice. He's going to be in Saturday at the Meadows. Chris Lambs will drive him. He was good. 58, 28 in the end of it, and that was all the last eighth of a mile. Got him down to the inside, and he paced past him again. He likes that trip, and uh, raced very, very well. Trained, schooled, qualified very, very well this morning uh, in that type of trip also. So I was happy with him. That wasn't a trip that was too fast for him. It was exactly what he probably needed heading into a heading into a race where there's going to be, you're going to pace 54 on Saturday. So I think 58, four days out, scope clean, no issues, no blood, no mucus, no nothing. I like what I saw. If I was to be picky, over on the left shaft a bit, maybe a little tightness in his hocks. Um, Tim will likely have uh, the veterinarian have a uh, have a look at him. And then uh, the last official starter of the day was memory and imagination. I thought maybe a hair flat. I was just noticing going to the gate that we did not have velvet on him. We always do. He needs weight. Didn't seem to bother him too much today. Uh, the track was starting to get a little sandy. Now, the track was good. It was a beautiful day. No complaints. But the track was a little bit deep. And um, memory and imagination felt like he didn't want any more than 58 today, which was telling. Trotting good, doing his work good, finished up 28-3, came a good last quarter, but I would like to see a little firmer track and a little faster mile. We will likely, uh, he's got three wins, so he can race. He can race in the non-winners of, uh, now it's usually non-winners of four. Tim told me today they haven't been filling it, so they made it a non-winners of three, but not more than six. I, I don't really care. That's fine with me. We'll likely race him there uh, next week. Next Saturday, we're going to have a busy uh now, this Saturday coming, the one after, is when uh, Arson will race. Not more as a five, but not more than eight has been filling. He's going to get a start, a prep race. So is Memory and Imagination going to get a prep race also? Actually, I think his first race is the Bunker Hill. It's not a stake race. Either way, he's going to get a prep race. Or two, maybe. Um time is on my side we'll be racing that Saturday also in the final of this series if they ever get it to go so that'll be a, a really cool and big next Saturday next weekend for us at the Meadows and the last horse of the day was not official was unofficial and he was very good I warmed up pickpocket today warmed him up thought he was good he's always a little tricky with his hobbles I took the boots off him behind we added uh polos with that wrap over top and I told you guys the other day I like to do that sometimes because I want to see if they're interfering one the polos and vet wrap are pretty it's it's enough protection for a horse just kind of picking at their shins or chewing at their shins that it's not a big deal but I want to see if there's any gouges out of that vet wrap if it, you know did the horse brush up higher and maybe take some hair off I just want to it's a good indicator of what he is and is not doing and when I come off the track uh, both sides of the vet wrap were you could see where he was mildly brushing up and down both shins but not even enough to tear the vet wrap right just brown you could see where he was rubbing up and down both shins without any without any puncture in the in the vet wrap so i'm almost tempted to go ahead and qualify him like that to be honest um i like what i saw from pickpocket today now we went a mile in uh i went a mile in 57 and three or four off a of half of 102 so a big mile, a big last half right now. I was in the two hole or three hole chasing some pacers down the lane. Um, he qualified very, very good. So really happy with pickpocket day. I did not know what to expect. Now he did burn a little bit in the hobbles. He did chew at those shins a little bit. The only problem I had with pickpocket was that I can't go with him next week if I go to Oak Grove. So we uh, opted to change his hobbles out. Gypsy Hills were longer. The ropes are longer, and I think that will benefit Pickpocket. The only problem is I don't know where he would wear them in that bike. So I'm going to ask maybe... Now, this is assuming that Pick that uh, Kings County gets in into a place where he can do some damage. He draws a 7 or 8 hole, and we look at the rest of the card, and it doesn't look like it's going to be a very fortuitous day for us. Then I likely won't go. If it doesn't make sense to go, I'm not going to go. But if it makes sense for me to be there, I definitely will. And um, if I am, I maybe ask, I know it, it's a big ask because uh, there's a number of people that can go here. Mike Wilders can do a fine job. Um, you know, a lot Brady, all those guys are here. 
And if we don't have somebody and we need somebody, maybe I could ask Chris to go over and qualify. But he's got his own horses. That's a big ask. Anyway, let's see how it plays out. But Pickpocket's ready to go. Is he perfect? No, but he did just trot a half in like 55 and 3 or 55 and 4 today. So it was a good start to him. I was tempted to put him in the trailer and qualify him at Northfield. But my immediate answer to that inside my own head was he's not going to race on a half. He doesn't need to be on a half. He's not going to gain anything from qualifying nor training any longer at Northfield Park. Why don't we leave him here? He has three wins also. He fits the same class as memory and imagination a week later. He's going to the Meadowlands. He doesn't need to be on a half mile track. Why don't you just leave him here? So I left memory and imagination here at the Meadows in Washington with, with Tim. I left pickpocket here also because a bigger track is going to help him. He did his best work at Lexington on a 7 eighths, and he's either going to race at the Meadowlands, which is a mile track, or back to Oak Grove, which is a half, about 5 eighths mile track. There's no need for him to be at Northfield Park. There's no gain for us in that. Um, so memory and imagination stayed. He stayed, and so did Arson. Arson's class goes here again. I already know he can get around a half mile track. I trained him the other day. The non is a 5, but not more than 8. Seems like a softer class here than it would be in against some, some grave diggers still at Northfield Park. Northfield Park, people don't understand. You need to respect that track. It is a gatekeeper's track. And what I mean by that is a lot of those horses are battle-tested, tough, tough animals. And you don't want to tangle with them on a, on a regular basis. I know I don't. You know, horses that are just tough. And it's not to say that they're not tough here, but you race on a bigger track. It just seems like Northfield, there's always somebody waiting to stab you, right? Always somebody waiting you didn't see coming that goes up comes up with a huge mile. Where at the Meadows, you get a look at the, the, the program. Now there's a five, but not more than eight. It's a solid, conditioned race. Where in Northfield, it would be combined with the numbers of 4,000 or 3 or 5 or whatever, last 6, uh, maybe even throw in an optional claimer. Some guy's waiting for you there. Whereas the Meadows, now there's a 5, but not more than 8. You can't be in that class unless you have 8 wins or less. So it just made more sense to leave him here. Not to mention, yes, we'd love to end up in the Little Brown Jug with Arson, but we'd also love to race in the Adios. And that's exactly where they're going to race it, is right there, and where his first stake race is is right there. So no more leaving home for the next little while for him. That is his home for the next few weeks anyway. So a great, I would say a great day. One, uh, appears that that lady is fine, which is good, survives, so that's good. Uh, two, greatest ending, train great. So did, um, so did Insider Trading, unfortunately. Now, I will say this, had I not trained her that little bit faster, I wouldn't have scoped her. There'd be no need to, right? What are you scoping and looking for? When I scooted her to the last quarter, I wanted to scope her and say, was there any blood there? Was there anything going on there that we need to address? I don't know that I would have done that had we gone a mile in 25. So I am glad that I went a mile in 15 or 16 with her. And I am glad that we caught it. I'm glad that she's trotting better. A little disappointed that we're not going to be able to race or sat uh, on Thursday, but that that happens. So happy with the trainers, uh, very happy with the qualifiers. The only disappointing part of the entire day, horse-wise, was Gypsy Hill, and I think he just needs a little help working through this little mental block that he has right now. We'll get him there. We'll get him there. So uh, I guess the takeaway for him is he's not lame, he's not sore. There's nothing going on in that regard. Mechanically, for the most part, he's good. He just needs to have a little stronger more mental fortitude right now we're gonna help him uh, help him get there so with that I'll let you guys go I actually I left a little bit late I forgot that I was racing tonight to be honest mounts for all is in race one I'm not gonna make it back to like 5:30. so good luck to you and myself and everybody tonight uh, I think we got two or three horses in tonight should be a lot of fun I will talk to you all very soon have a wonderful rest of your day to all my partners at the qualifiers today, aside from Gypsy. Don't worry about Gypsy, he'll come around. But for everybody else, a tremendous day for us. Take care.